Hey, what's up guys? Today we'll be talking about the Surface Pro 6. This is not a new device. In fact, it came out nearly a year ago, back in October of 2018, but I still wanted to check out this type of laptop, this special two-in-one form factor where the keyboard is a detachable accessory and the screen has a kickstand. It didn't really seem practical to me on paper, and strangely enough, there aren't that many reviews of this thing on YouTube, so I thought I would give this thing a go and see how it feels to use. So first things first, build quality. Because of the design of this device, the screen houses all of the internal components, so it's a lot thicker than just a normal laptop screen, but it also means it's super rigid with absolutely no flex on it. The Surface Type Cover, so the keyboard and trackpad portion of this device, is flexible and is finished in Alcantara, which is really comfortable to rest your hands on. At the top, you'll find the power and volume buttons for when you have the type cover detached. It doesn't actually come included, by the way. It's a separate accessory along with the stylus. And the kickstand extends really far back to an almost flat position, so there's a lot of flexibility here. The Surface Pro uses a 12.3 inch 2736 by 1824 resolution display. That's a little bit more than 1440p and it uses a 3x2 aspect ratio which gives you a lot more vertical space which I find a lot more convenient for productivity. It just kind of sucks to have the black bars on the top and bottom when watching widescreen video is all. The panel itself though is really good. 370 nits of brightness, good color gamut and color accuracy, 1100 to 1 contrast ratio, and it's a touchscreen with an optional stylus. This is a solid 9 out of 10 screen as far as content creation goes. The only thing that I found curious is on Notebook Check, where they also do screen measurements, all of their measurements were significantly better than mine, so I'm not sure if they use different panels on the same Surface Pro 6 device, but just keep that in mind. The speakers are also quite good. They're similar to the Surface Book 2 being mounted on the bezels firing directly at your ears. They're surprisingly loud for how small the grill is. It's got good detail and good clarity. Obviously, you won't get much bass with these small grills, but it's totally fine for YouTube videos. The keyboard I found really easy to get used to, and that's been true for all of the other Surface devices that I've tried. It's not the greatest keyboard out there, but it's among one of the best that I've seen. Great layout, all the keys are where you would expect them to be, there's three stage white LED backlighting, you even get a function toggle so you can switch between function keys and media keys with just one key press. I will say though, using this thing as a laptop on your lap isn't great. The keyboard is fine for the most part, but it's the way the screen and the stand just kind of digs into your legs rather than one solid flat surface resting evenly across your legs. And the fact that the hinge isn't a solid piece means you lose a fair bit of flexibility and freedom if you want to use it as a laptop without having a flat surface to rest it on. The trackpad is rather small, which makes my fingers go off the trackpad when scrolling up and down. I also found the clicks to be really loud, but otherwise it's a good trackpad. It is a Microsoft trackpad after all, so it runs Windows Precision Drivers, accurate tracking, gesture recognition is great, and the whole deal. Ports on this device are almost non-existent. You have your power, USB 3, a mini display port, top left has your headphone jack, and buried beneath the kickstand is the micro SD card slot. Hardware-wise, it's running Intel KB Lake R CPUs, not the newer Whiskey Lake ones, so mine uses the i5-8250U, 8 gigs of RAM, 256 gig SSD, and a Marvel Avastar Wi-Fi card running 802.11ac Wi-Fi. The RAM and SSD are both soldered on, and the SSD they're using is the Intel 6000P with GIMP speeds at the lower capacities. But they do source from multiple different brands, so your SSD will vary depending on the unit. It's also fanless, so it's completely silent, but obviously you can't passively dissipate 15 watts without a fan. So putting an extended heavy load on this thing, so video editing for example, will cause it to throttle well below the base clock. There's a 45 watt hour battery inside that will get you around eight, maybe eight and a half hours of battery life, enough for a full workday. The charger they include is compact and you gotta love the magnetic charging. It's not USB-C, but it's still good nonetheless. The Surface Pro 6 started originally at 900 bucks for just the tablet itself, but it's now 700 bucks, probably because the Surface Pro 7 is just around the corner, or it's $1,000 if you want to bump the SSD from 128 gigs to 256 gigs. 
and the type cover starts at 130 US dollars. It gets really expensive really quickly, but for the right person, and students get 10% off by the way, getting a separate laptop and tablet that matches the screen, the speakers, the battery life, keyboard, trackpad, the whole deal, to have both devices match the Surface Pro would cost more than just buying the single device. So if you are aware of the limitations of this form factor as a laptop, especially using it on inconsistent surfaces, the ports don't bug you and the lack of upgradability isn't something that you care about anyway, it's pretty awesome. Okay, that is the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Any laptops you would like me to review next, the comments are always available. Thanks for watching.